So we have now got a query that successfully queries the uh, SharePoint search engine. So now if we go back to my conceptual diagram, you can actually see, here's my conceptual diagram. You can see that we have a result source and we have a PowerShell commandlet. So now it's time to turn it into an Azure function. So let's take care of this bit. So now I'm gonna to switch to Azure. Now I'm gonna assume that you've already done some stuff in Azure and you have actually created yourself a new um, Azure function app. I won't go through that process now because I already have one. So I have a, an Azure function app that you can see here called Colmsy Apps. And I'm gonna come into here now, into this functions area and I'm gonna click plus. So at this point, you're now prompted with kind of a large number of options, but basically this uh, is a screen that asks you what type of function do you want to run and as you can see there are lots and lots and lots The one that we're going to use or the two that I use the most is a timer trigger and a HTTP trigger um, But and this is the one we're going to choose here a HTTP trigger is basically your function is going to run when caught It becomes a web service it has a URL you can post to it and it'll execute So I'm going to come in here and choose HTTP trigger and I'm going to pick PowerShell This will then ask me for the name of the function and I will call it Musefeed. And click Create. Okay, that should not take long. In, in a short moment, you will have like a skeleton Azure function ready to go that's got a very basic PowerShell script in it. And here it is here. Now I'm going to just pop test open for a second and show you how this is uh, what this is doing. The basic gist is this: this variable request body, what it's doing is anything sent to this web service comes in a variable called request, and it's assumed that that request is JSON, and so that is then converted via the get content commandlet into a PowerShell object called request body, and then we're pulling out a property called name and if you actually have a look here's some JSON and we can test this so this is JSON that we can test to this Azure function hello from Paul right name hello from Paul it's JSON if I go and execute this test and run it so let's now go run you will see in the output over here hello from Paul, and you can see that this script has actually run and successfully completed. So what this is doing is taking that dollar name and sending it straight back out as a hello dollar name, and that's what the web service returns. So now I am going to um, uh, set PMP PowerShell up. So we're actually going to replace it, and we're going to replace it with a script that does a, whole, uh, a couple of different things. In fact, I'll, I'll paste the whole script in here so you can see what my Azure function looks like. And let's just fix up some of the carriage returns, just so you can see. I think the whole thing is 11 lines. No, nope, 12 lines. Okay, so the first and most important thing, I suppose, really is actually this import module statement, because um, PNP PowerShell is a library. Recall that earlier when I was using um, PowerShell interactively, I actually used the command install module to auto magically download and install a PNP Parrots module. Now, in actual fact, here we don't have the luxury of doing that, but it is possible to still install the, the PNP modules that we need into um, your Azure function. The way you do that, by the way, so I'm going to save this Muse feed as it is. I haven't done anything with it yet. I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to come back out to my um, Azure Function app itself. Under the Platform Features menu, under Platform Features and under Development Tools, we have this thing called Kudu, Advanced Tools. Now Kudu will open up another tab and it's kind of like an interactive debugger. It gives you a PowerShell console or a command line console, but it also has the advantage that it also allows you to upload content. Right, here's Kudu. So if I go to the debug console menu, it doesn't really matter which one I choose, I'll go PowerShell. Um, it gives you a nice little PowerShell console, which is cool, you can run things. But if you actually have a look, we are now in our Azure function environment. And if I go into the site directory and the WW root directory, you will actually see there's a directory for my function I just made called Musefeed, but I also made a folder called modules. So that's one that I created. How did I create um, that folder? I clicked on the plus and I was able to make a new folder. So I have a folder called modules. Now what's in modules? 
Well, there's a couple of things in there for basically bits and pieces of work I'm doing. But note this one, 21917101. That is actually the PNP PowerShell module. Now, I'm going to do it differently. That, that one isn't meaningful because I uploaded the folder with the version number of the module rather than the actual um, name of the module. Um, so let's correct that now. So how do I upload or where do I get this module from? Well, the easiest way is since I've already installed it on my PC, let's come into here. Let's just clear this. If I type the command get module, this shows me all of the various modules in my local PowerShell environment. And you can see there SharePoint PNP PowerShell online is right there. So if I go get module name, SharePoint PNP PowerShell online. And if I then select, I think it's path, could be wrong, but I think it might be path. There it is. Yes, there is the installation folder of that module. C program files, Windows PowerShell modules, SharePoint PNP online. And you can see that there's a new version since I last did this. So this is a good example where I'll load the latest module up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the contents of that folder up into here and I'll do that now. So the quickest way for me to do that is get an Explorer window up for that folder, which I will do. You can see there is our SharePoint PNP PowerShell online. So up, updating or adding modules to an Azure function is as easy as this. I click it, I drag it, I bring it up into here and I let go. And if you have a look, there's a little Swiss Army knife, thing, uh, Swiss Army knife thingy going on there. And this is busy uploading all of those modules into the Azure function. So let's just wait for that to finish uploading because it won't take long. Right, that module has now uploaded. And if I actually click in there, you will see there's my folder 2.21.1712.2. And inside here are a whole bunch of various files, right? That is part of the PowerShell PNP uh, module. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to first grab this path here. I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard because that's the one that I want. Cool. And we're actually done with Kudu. I'm going to go back to my Azure function. So I'm going to close this all together. Um, if we come back into my function, here's my muse feed function. Now, if you recall, look at the import module command. Now what I'm going to do is actually put the path like this. I am going to put in D home site WW root modules SharePoint PNP PowerShell online 2.21.1712 SharePoint PNP PowerShell online.psd1. And so that is, and that says global under there. So that now imports my module and makes it available. Uh, the next command are setting up usernames. So basically what I have to do here is the way I'm doing this is I have to run it as a user. This is a service account scenario. So here I'm putting in some credentials to run as. I'll come to that password thing in a second. Here's my site URL. And the next three lines are basically creating a credentials object, this dollar creds. And then I'm using that connect PNP online command that I used earlier, except I'm passing it these credentials, okay? Um, I'm also actually asking the search engine to return some extra properties that don't get returned by default. And in particular, I want the list ID. So you'll see why uh, later. But I also want modified by because that's um, by default, SharePoint search will bring you who back who created something, not necessarily who modified it. And in an activity feed, often it's the modified stuff that we're interested in. Now you can see here that I'm gonna submit a search query. I'm no longer gonna do Jessica. I'm actually gonna make a search that just does a wildcard search. I need to change that result source ID to match the new one that I made. So if I come back to my result source here and I put that in, let's go back into here, put him in. Awesome. I'm bringing back the relevant results and there's some uh, further detail here. I'm sorting by last modified time. And then I'm using another parameter called select properties, dollar return properties, which is these four extra fields that I want to bring back. What I'm finally doing is then, so that all of that stuff goes into dollar result. Dollar result is the output of that search. And then I'm using another great commandlet that comes built into um, PowerShell called convert to JSON. So I take the result, I pipe it into convert to JSON, and that gives me a variable called dollar output, which is in JSON file, a JSON format. And I need that because that's the format that Power Apps understands. So I then output that, 
as an ASCII file um, and I send dollar $output out as a response. Right, now let's deal with this password. So basically the deal is this, you don't want to hard code passwords in your script. Now this is a security by obscurity kind of scenario. What is this $ENV PW? Well, if you go back, let me just save what we've done so far. If I go back into my app and I come down into application settings, which you can also get to from the overview often too, application settings. So this is where you can set up kind of the equivalent of you know, the sort of web.config parameters that you'd see in IIS or environment variables. And down here, see these application settings? I'm going to add a new setting. And the setting I'm going to add is called PW for password. And then I'm going to put a password in here. Now, I'm not actually putting my password in here, something that is secure. Um, I'm actually going to pause the video so that you don't see the password I put in here. But rest assured, once I put this in, I click save and I've now created that application setting that stores the password. Right, I've come back to my script here and um, I had to make one little fix. So I had one line where I didn't, so that line, in fact, it was 11, I was, I was right. So 11 search results for Jessica and 11 lines in my script. Um, now, the, the important thing is here, actually the request body is gonna be ignored because we're not actually processing any parameter. All this script does is send data back. And so I'm gonna run this now and keep an eye on this output window here. So I click run, it queries SharePoint, and bam, back comes a whole bunch of JSON data. Look at all of that goodness. So that's great. The fact that this is producing JSON is, means that this script is running correctly as expected. Okay, so now if we go back to my conceptual diagram, we have dealt, we've created an Azure function. Now it's time to move on to creating a custom connector so that Power Apps can consume this.